Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Planet Tyro. I'm your host, Donald Wonder. And uh, you know what? I want to get back into doing TV talk, a lot of TV reviews. I've watched a lot of shows. We are in the television renaissance. And if you're looking at the title of this video already, you know what's coming. But let's, let's talk about Hannibal Lecter. Now, Hannibal Lecter is one of the most iconic villains in fiction television he's had such a long legacy and the tv series has been praised for so long how it was so good and apparently it got prematurely cancelled before it got to finish and everyone on you was talking about it at the time it's so stylish you know had big actors on it and you know i've been looking forward to get to this for the longest time even my co-host old boy was telling me don i want to talk about hannibal but here's the thing man I've never been a massive fan of Hannibal. And to be honest with you, when I was younger, like most people, it used to kind of scare me. So I was interested to go back and properly understand the character. So what I want to do first is just last week, I watched all the movies of Hannibal because that's how it started. It was originally a book series, as we know, and it was adapted into a movie series. And then most recently, the TV series was done, which is, which is what everyone's been praising. So... I went back, watched all the movies, and I want to talk about the movies. Now, so far, I believe there's been five movies, and I want to talk about them chronologically. I want to talk about them, how they date Hannibal from a young boy to a man, to an old man, to, you know, the, the most recent movie. A lot of movies to get to, and I remember I did this before when I spoke about Ip Man. I never even did the, I never even did the last Ip Man movie, Ip Man 3 with Mike Tyson. That was pretty, that was good. I really enjoyed that, by the way. So I'm not really going to do another video on Ip Man. But let's talk about Hannibal now. And if we go to the earliest, earliest, earliest Hannibal chronological release, then we're going to talk about Hannibal Rising first. Hannibal Rising was made in 2006, I believe. And this is Hannibal's origin, which everyone was kind of curious. How did this... How did this man, how did this man become the serial killer? What's his origins? What's his story? And this is a World War II drama. And to be honest with you, it's more or less a story of revenge. And Hannibal has kind of a sympathetic background, how it came to be. Um, I'm not really going to get into spoilers, to be honest with you, because this is a movie, for the most part, I actually enjoyed. I thought Hannibal, from a writing perspective, he's, he was interesting. His origin was interesting. The movie has a couple of flaws, but the presentation is excellent. This movie looks really, really good. The actor who plays Hannibal, this young guy, he is absolutely fantastic. I thought he really did well. The actual plot with the movie, it's good, but to be honest with you, they're missing a lot of transition with the Hannibal character. Like, you understand there was a particular tragic element in his, in his past that put the seed of cannibalism into him. And that put him on the path of being this horrible person, this monster. And to be honest with you, the movie, the, the thing I didn't like about the movie is that it shows you his youth. Then he kind of jumps to being a young man. And they don't really show you any in between. And then it kind of just rushes to the killing spree or the revenge plot. And the antagonists in it are just kind of mindless. They had the opportunity to have a much more riveting and much more... They could have had a think piece, particularly with the bad guys that did this thing to Hannibal and his sister. They could have made them more sympathetic and not just these one note, insane Nazi guys. But the movie is a decent origin. From a, from a directing perspective, it's good. From the acting perspective, it's good. But the story, I just think it actually could have been a little bit more fleshed out. But to be honest with you, this movie is the last movie that was released, the most recent movie, 2006. It looks really good. And I still think it's a decent origin. I think they could do better, but honestly, that's good. So now we're moving on to two movies, which is Manhunter and Red Dragon. Now, Manhunter and Red Dragon, they cover the same story because this was the first Hannibal book ever written. And Manhunter is the original Hannibal movie. It was made in the, what, the mid, early 80s, I believe. And Red Dragon is the same story, but it's more faithful to the book because the book is actually called Red Dragon. They made the Manhunter movie. Look, man, I watched Red Dragon and Manhunter, and again, they are the same story. 
Manhunter is really, really praised. People love Manhunter. It was a, you know, the original Hannibal story. So I understand why people have such a strong connection to it. But I'm sorry, man. Red Dragon, it surpasses it in every single way. The cast is absolutely stellar. Edward Norton, Ralph, uh, Ralph Hines has even got uh, the, the, the man who passed away, him. And, uh, you know, I can't even remember. Anthony Hopkins, of course. I mean... Honestly, I'll tell you right now, I like Red Dragon even more than Silence of the Lambs. I think Red Dragon is the best Hannibal movie of them all. And I know that's blasphemy. You know, Silence of the Lambs is the masterpiece. I'll get to Silence of the Lambs in a moment, but I think Red Dragon has stellar acting. It has, it really tweaked everything about Manhunter and it was more faithful to the Red Dragon story. And honestly, I just, I, Hannibal's great. Anthony Hopkins is great. Edward Norton's great. The storyline, the, the bad guy, the two fairy, Ralph, Ralph Fane. I mean, I was I remember watching this back in the day and thinking that it was just mediocre, but watching it now, it's really good. Still has its problems, especially I think Edward Norton's character could have been just a little bit better. And um, even, you know, honestly, it's, a, it's the best of the whole movie franchise. My personal opinion, Red Dragon stands out. And that's going to lead me to Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Even though Manhunter was the first Hannibal Lecter movie, Anthony Hopkins, his portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in this movie just really was the cultural phenomenon. This was the movie that just took it to a whole new level. And it's a good movie, but the problem with um, the problem with Silence of the Lambs, it doesn't age as well. And I did watch it when it came out when I was young and it scared the shit out of me. And even today, it's still very gory, but... It's just the police is very dated. It's just, it's slow paced. They use a lot of music in the wrong ways. It just, it doesn't age as well. And I know Red Dragon was made 12 years later. So obviously it's going to be a little bit more modern, but it shows its age. But the acting is still absolutely stellar. I think the twist with how Hannibal escapes is still really good. And it's still thrilling. But again, I think Red Dragon's better. I'm sorry. I, I just think it's just constructed better. Could you could you redo Silence of the Lambs and make it better? Possibly, but Anthony Hopkins' performance, you just you just can't really beat it. So and that brings us to the most recent movie, the last movie in the franchise, which is just called Hannibal, which is the sequel to Silence of the Lambs, which is set I think it's set what 10 years after Silence Yeah, 10 years after Silence of the Lambs. The real time between when the movies Silence of the Lambs and this was made. So it's you know like a real time the real passage of time movie Hannibal is always seen as the goofy movie in the franchise it's it's seen as over the top and I remember watching it when I was young as well thinking that it was just, just kind of silly kind of goofy you know yes out of all the movies this is the one that's the most just it kind of compromises the most it feels I don't know I didn't you, I can't really take this movie too seriously because Hannibal is kind of like the anti-hero even saving uh, Jodie Foster's character oh I should mention that Jodie Foster didn't come back for this movie I think the director didn't come back as well he didn't really want to have anything to do with the movie and again I think the book was still the book was just finished but Anthony Hopkins came back but since then I think Anthony Hopkins regretted doing this movie as well so most people involved in this movie kind of regret the movie it's an okay movie but it doesn't end Hannibal's story that's another thing that kind of bothers me and it's, it is kind of goofy um, I like, I think another thing that bothers me about the movie is Hannibal just seems unstoppable. He's he's basically like a super villain, a suit, like a Batman villain. He's lifting up shit. He's holding people. He's killing all these people that are younger than him. I mean, you're meant to suspend your disbelief that he's clever, but he's doing a lot of physical things in the movie, even in, even in yeah, Silence of the Lambs to a certain extent. But this movie is the most unbelievable portrayal of Hannibal doing things it's like really he's kind of an unstoppable force in the movie so anyway that's basically it the Hannibal movie series is interesting and they've got an interesting character here and of course Anthony Hopkins portrayal is just legendary of Hannibal and you you know I gotta respect the fact this is an older you know villain this is an older character played with such menace with such gravitas and still watching it today Anthony Hopkins performance is the thorough line through what three of the movies Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal 
Anthony Hopkins' performance is just amazing. And you know, it's funny, just seeing, and see, there's another TV series we never spoke about. Just seeing Anthony Hopkins in his most recent series, the HBO series, which I'm just blanking on the name, but I'll put a picture on the screen here. Him again, play, you know, man, Anthony Hopkins, he's just been consistently through his career. Absolutely amazing. So I'm looking forward. Now, I've, now I have the base idea of Hannibal. I can go and watch a series now. And I know the series, again, I think it's set before the kind of the Red Dragon time where he's a younger man still doing his thing. So I just wanted the base knowledge of Hannibal from the movies before I compare it to the TV series and give my thoughts on the TV series. But again, I don't know how Hannibal has kind of translated into current pop culture apart from the TV series. I still think he's a very beloved character and that's why I was really interested in seeing him now as an adult i can understand the writing and the psychology and a lot of the stuff of it and you know hannibal because the franchise never ended with the movie in particular hannibal being the last one i have a feeling one day they're going to reboot this whole franchise i just i feel it in my bones and maybe if they continue this we'll get to the series if they continue the series maybe that'll be enough but i just have a feeling we're going to see hannibal movies again and especially because the horror thriller genre are doing so many reboots anyway i really do see them doing hannibal but you know that performance of anthony hopkins can it be beat i doubt it so we'll see what happens in the future but anyway in a couple weeks you're going to see my review of the whole series i'm going to do that with cat face the old boy we're going to talk about the hannibal series and yeah you know let me know if you guys have seen the hannibal movies if you've seen the series let me know what you think leave a comment in the comment section down below and again guys we've got a lot of series to get through in fact i'm going to record another series right now and i'll put out next week because there's a lot of tv series a lot of new shows i really want to talk about with you guys and i won't be in front of the camera all the time but um just this time i felt like doing it so guys thanks for watching subscribe to the channel give us a thumbs up again leave a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next video take care peace out